Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this video addresses a common objection to memetics. The idea is that survival of the fittest, being a circular tautology, is a problem for memetics because we lack a predictive theory of mean fitnesses. One fairly common objection to memetics is that it's vulnerable to the idea that survival of the fittest is a tautology, since the fittest are defined as being those that survive, and that's a circular argument. David Wilson made this point in an article titled Flying Over Uncharted Territory, which was a review of Blackmore's book, The Meme Machine. He says, The oft-repeated accusation that natural selection as a tautology fails because fitness is not defined in terms of whatever evolves, but in terms of the properties that enable organisms to survive and reproduce in their environments. Moths that are coloured to match their background have a high fitness with respect to bird predation, but cryptic coloration may not evolve if the appropriate mutations either do not arise or are lost by genetic drift. The ability to define fitnesses independently of what evolves saves the concept of natural selection from being a tautology. For the meme concept to escape the same problem, we must define cultural fitness independently of what evolves. If the first four notes of Beethoven's fifth is a powerful meme, only because it is common, we have achieved no insight. Serene Lee and Griffiths in 1999 also voiced this complaint, saying, With the possible exception of scientific ideas, we have no explanation of the nature of the fitness of ideas, nor do we typically understand why they differ in fitness. We can call a tune a meme with a high replication potential, rather than catchy, if we like, but without source laws, this adds nothing to our understanding of musical trends. Maria Kronfeldner also gives this objection in her 300-page critique of memetics. In her summary, on page 290, she writes, Either the analogy is heuristically trivial because it loses its main claim, namely that memetics presents an alternative to traditional explanations, which is given in terms of properties and interests of humans, or the explanatory units of selection analogy is trivial in explanatory terms because it is tautological. It does nothing to explain anything since it merely states that those memes that have a high actual survival are those memes that have a high propensity for survival without explaining where this high fitness emerges from. Massimo Pigliucci gives much the same objection in a recent podcast. I mean, the, the point that you're raising, it's actually, uh, it, it directly leads to what I think arguably is the most crucial objection to uh, memetics, to the whole idea of memetics, which is this. We don't have a functional ecology of memes. How would you explain that? Right. So, what, for example, what is a functional ecology and why do we, mean it? We, right, need, right. we need it? Let's go back for a second to um, one of the most popular and most misguided objections to the standard Darwinian theory. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I, think, I hope that, that then that will make sense of, uh, in terms of medics. So, often you hear this thing that, you know, the theory of natural selection is simply a, a tautology. It's, it's, it's a truism. It's something that it doesn't really have any content because, after all, we're talking about the survival of the fittest, and then we define the fittest as those who survive, right? So if you put it that way, it truly, Darwinian, Darwinian theory truly becomes a simple tautology. Or you're simply right. so saying, it's just you know, the, the genes that are the most adaptive are going to propagate. Right. Right. And, and you're then defining the genes that are, most, that are propagating as the one, in fact, they're, they're most adaptive. And, right. and it's okay. completely circular. It becomes completely circular. Now, um, what saves standard Darwinian theory from that sort of objection is the fact that we have a functional ecology. That is, we don't define the fittest organisms or the fittest genes as those who survive. We actually can make predictions about which genes or which organisms are going to, to do better because we have an ecology. We have an information about the environment. So we can tell, for mm -hmm. instance, that uh, certain environments favor you know, larger animals. Um, and therefore, we can make predictions about the fact that any gene that contributes to increasing the size of, of, that, particular, of, of that particular species of animals will be favored by natural selection. We also know, however, that if the environment changes in a certain other direction where, in fact, smaller sizes are, are favorable, then, then we can recalculate the functional ecology and therefore the population biology of those genes. In other words, we decoupled, biologists decouple the definition of fit from uh, from the from the fact that from the observation that certain organisms or genes survive or don't survive, and it's that decoupling it's, that is made possible by a ecological theory of genes um, that that takes the theory of natural selection out of the of the problem of being a tautology. Now, in the case of memes, it seems to me um, 
it's not clear at all how you would do that. Because why don't we consider, for instance, you know, let's let's take one of the most common examples of memes, which is religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, religion as a meme is, I, one could say, successful mm-hmm. because it's a widespread idea, right? But why is it successful? I mean, what makes that thing successful? And if the, an- if the answer is simply, well, it's successful because it reproduces, it spreads mm-hmm. fast, then you're not saying anything. You're simply saying that it's successful because it's successful. You're not adding any content to it. You have to have some e- ecological idea, cultural ecological idea, essentially, that tells you why certain ideas or certain tunes or certain um, you know, constructs are more successful than others. Hmm. We do, in fact, know some things about which memes are fitter than other ones. This area is part of what is often called applied memetics, an area which also includes memetic engineering. It seems to be one of the better studied areas of the field to me, simply because social media marketing and advertising departments need to be able to predict what spreads and what doesn't in order to be able to rapidly construct successful viral marketing media without the expense of doing a lot of testing. Popular writers and musicians know what people are likely to share. Scientists often have some idea about what scientific ideas are likely to persist. Good editors know what will sell and what won't. Military propaganda creators know which rumours are most likely to spread. Often meme fitness variations are obvious. So, for example, if you put Lady Gaga into the title of a video you create, it is likely to be viewed more frequently than if you use Joe Blogs instead. However, the area of what makes ideas spread has also been studied by social scientists. Francis Heiligen's 1998 paper, What Makes a Meme Successful? Selection Criteria for Cultural Evolution, gave an early introduction to the field, breaking the meme life cycle down into assimilation, retention, expression and transmission, and observing that successful memes need strengths in each of these areas. More recently, there have been many studies of social media on the internet that look into why memes spread. For instance, see Dan Zarella's of The Science of Retweets, or his Eight Elements of Contagious Ideas. Of course, we don't know everything about this field, but it's often a challenge to determine the fitness of genes without testing them in an organic ecology as well. Even if it was true that social scientists were totally clueless about what spreads and what does not, which is far from the case, then the correct attitude would not be to to declare the whole enterprise of predicting mean fitnesses to be hopeless, but rather to actually do some field work and figure out factors that make some ideas spread while others do not. The objection that survival of the fittest is a tautology is exactly as much of a fallacy in mimetic evolution as it is in organic evolution for exactly the same reasons. Um, Enjoy.